السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, with episode number six of Ibrahim عليه السلام uh, uh, reason season, a reason for the season um, as we are approaching the ten days of Dhul Hijjah the holy the very holy days inshallah ta'ala we'll talk about them towards the end of the episode inshallah ta'ala um, uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim a giant mashallah one of the mighty prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have sinned uh, we talked about his name in the beginning in episode number one what's in a name we said yeah he does not have an Arab name but um, Ibrahim loving Ibrahim is following Ibrahim alayhi salam inna awla nasi bi Ibrahim ladina tabao but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, those people who follow the way of Ibrahim are the people subhanallah uh, to be called Abrahamic is the following Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. We said he called us Muslims uh, uh, by one simple act that we're going to talk about today, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, the act of him willingness to sacrifice his son. Uh, aslama. Uh, we said that um, his name is the most, um, uh, the second most mentioned in the Quran. And that his name, Ibrahim, means the father of all nations. Um, in episode number two, we talk about his qualities and the best quality of Sayyidina Ibrahim or the main quality of Sayyidina Ibrahim is Hanif and Muslimah, that he was somebody who was um, passionate about monotheism and um, uh, um, Hanif and Muslimah means somebody who is against polytheism. Poly, uh, polytheism. Um, he's, a, he's a one who uh, coined uh, the word Muslims uh, for us, as we said, to submit and surrender. Um, we talked about the qualities of Ibrahim alayhi salam as it related to us as Muslims. We said that Ibrahim alayhi salam and Prophet Muhammad, of course, uh, uh, there is a blood lineage uh, through Prophet Ishmael, the firstborn of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Um, and then Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, um, his, some of the Muslim qualities is we pray. When we pray, we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Oh Allah, send salutation, salutation and blessing upon Prophet Muhammad and the progeny of Prophet Muhammad, like you send uh, salutation and blessing upon Abraham and the progeny of Prophet Ibrahim. So all these, subhanAllah, continues. All these, subhanAllah, continues and continues. Um, it is the dua, the prayer of Ibrahim when he went to Mecca. We're going to talk about it today. That Allah would send a prophet uh, uh, from among the people. And Allah sent Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. There was a meeting in seven heavens uh, between Ibrahim and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Um, and the Prophet Muhammad looks physically like Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salam. And, uh, um, you know, uh, perhaps the, uh, the connectivity there is... Uh, the simple fact that Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger and the pilgrimage have um, been communicated to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, 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 through God, but it all had to do with, with, with Hagar and it all had to do with Abraham. Uh, in episode number five, uh, four, we talk about the early childhood of Ibrahim salam, and his relationship with his father who was an idol maker and how his father uh, rejected Ibrahim alayhi salam and how Ibrahim lovingly um, left and start calling uh, the people uh, for the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Babylon, Iraq, uh, as Ibrahim, um, you know, destroyed the idols, uh, his people uh, made this big fire, Allah saved him from that fire. Uh, and then the uh, uh, Namrud, uh, Namrud, uh, the, the ruler of, of, of Iraq, uh, would bring him and of course Namrad um, claimed to be God and eloquently um, and articulately Ibrahim will answer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who creates uh, the heavens and earth and the one who have a certain course for the sun that goes from the east to the west and he, uh, he challenged the king to reverse the cycle and of course um, the king could not. Uh, uh, he let him go and, and, and then Ibrahim married Sarah and Ibrahim started going into his travel. He went to Syria and he saw the people worshiping stars and moons uh, and the moon and there's no moons <laughs> and moon and, and the sun. And then everywhere he goes, whether it's in Iraq or whether it's in Syria, he planned the seed of monotheism in the hearts of the people and continues. Um, um, eventually he went to Egypt and in Egypt, Prophet uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam went to a place where Alexos was the king who was a womanizer 
and he was with Sarah, and Sarah was very beautiful, and Alexos took Sarah away from Ibrahim. Ibrahim is to be executed again, once again, he was in jail, he was in, uh, Ibrahim, you know, something about those prophets, man, they always go to jail. Um, they're always uh, at odd with the systems uh, because they call for social justice and they call for equality. But nevertheless, uh, Sarah could not be, um, you know, Sarah was taken by the king and as the king wanted to get his way with her, uh, she makes dua, أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who answered the, the, the prayer of the dis distressed. And then um, the king's hand would uh, be paralyzed. And in order to get his hand and paralyzed, um, he would let her husband out, Ibrahim. They will give him gifts of money, and they will give them a Egyptian princess by the name of Hagar. This is where we left last time. So Ibrahim, Hagar, and um, Sarah moved to the city of Al Khalil. Today we know it as the city of Hebron. Today is the sixth episode as Ibrahim lives in Palestine with his wife, Sarah, and uh, Hagar as a woman that helped around uh, the house. Uh, there are many narrations about Hagar. Hagar was Egyptian, so she was African. Uh, Hagar was younger than Sarah. Um, Hagar was um, uh, basically, in some narrations, she was uh, serving or helping or a maid. Uh, in other narrations, she was an Egyptian princess, but nevertheless, um, um, it is the divine wisdom, uh, subhanAllah, that uh, they lived in uh, a perfect uh, harmony until, until Sarah got to an age where she could not get Abraham any children, and she see Abraham playing with children all the time, so she know that her husband, uh, Prophet Ibrahim السلام, wants children. So Sarah suggested something that is out of this world. She actually suggested that Ibrahim would marry Hagar. Uh, I know this is sometimes not a biblical narration that uh, Sarah would say, go take this woman and have a child by her, um, and that she's um, uh, narrated as an, an incubine. Uh, but, but for the Muslim perspective, Sarah was a second wife. I mean, Hagar was a second wife. And immediately, um, of course, Hagar gets uh, pregnant and she begets for Abraham his first son, Ishmael. And this is also very, uh, very biblical. Um, um, I want you to know um, that the sacrifice of Sarah is not gonna be taken, it's not gonna be unnoticed. Um, for a woman to ask her husband to take another wife and have a child by her, of course, that's ancient times uh, you know, multiple wives were allowed, um, uh, but nevertheless, there is now a little story that is different than the biblical narration, and that that story is that eventually um, Abraham would be spending more time with with Hagar, and of course with his son Ishmael's baby Ishmael. Uh, that there is that jealousy from from Sarah's side. And from the uh, Bible uh, uh, story that Sarah got jealous and to, to some extent that, um, you know, um, uh, she could not bear to see her husband with this other woman and other child, of course, um, and Sarah could not get any children. And she asked Abraham to take Hagar and banish her somewhere else. From the Muslim perspective, yes, there was jealousy. And that's normal for, for Sarah to, to jealous. But Sarah, the loving wife, the one who asked for Hagar's hand in marriage for her, for her Abraham, for her husband, is more honorable to banish a woman and a child. Uh, we think it's the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the story gonna continue with us, right? So Ibrahim alayhi salam, nevertheless, Ibrahim alayhi salam would take Hagar and baby Ishmael. And Jerusalem is right there, Hebron or, or Al Khalil, the city of Khalil is next to Jerusalem is right here, and Abraham would go to this city here, biblically known as Tima, which is today's Medina, and he goes all the way to Paran, today's Mecca, right? Uh, these coordinates, just like the other trips to Iraq, the other trips to Syria, the other trips to Egypt, the trip to Palestine, uh, these trips, subhanAllah, coordinates were given to Ibrahim alayhi uh, salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam, uh, comes to 
um, uh, Paran, the city of Mecca, there's no Kaaba. That, that, the Kaaba that we seen was destroyed uh, by the flood of Noah, during the flood of Noah. Uh, and Muslims believe that the Kaaba was uh, uh, built by Adam, peace be upon him, as a compensation or as an expiation for the sin that he received, that he had eaten from the forbidden tree. So God forgave him and Adam uh, built the Kaaba. Uh, what we know as the Kaaba was not built by Ibrahim. Ibrahim actually was given the coordinates by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to re-resurrect. وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ The Quran is very clear that Ibrahim was re-resurrecting the foundation because the foundation were still there. So he was given uh, that coordinates. And then, you know, something fascinating happened. Ibrahim leaves his wife, Hagar, and his baby son, Ishmael, and takes off, go back to Sarah, right? And what can he say? Uh, you know, um, um, he said, oh my Lord, I have deposited, the word he used, I have deposited my, my wife and my son in a valley with no vegetation whatsoever. Where? Uh, at, at, your, at your holy house, subhanAllah. And, oh Allah, he makes two dua. The first dua, فجعل, oh, make, make the hearts of the people come to those, to, 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 to Hajar. And, um, and the second dua, um, it comes later on. But let's, let's concentrate on that dua. Ibrahim could not say anything. Here's again, Ibrahim cannot say anything. What can he say? Uh, God commanded me to leave you here and I'm leaving. So he just turned around and he's leaving. And Hagar spoke immediately. She said, is it, is it true that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered you to leave me here? Uh, uh, to leave me here in this place? He said, yes. Then she said, and he said, I mean, he could not speak, right? Uh, he's turning away, leaving his baby Ishmael and his wife Hagar in this place with no vegetation whatsoever, no food, nothing. You know, Mecca, to this day, you could see it. Me you know, Mecca is a valley, very small place. And by the way, it's very small, so the Muslims could be close to one another. I know this coronavirus is not right now, but inshallah ta'ala will come back to each other. You know, the whole idea of closeness, physical closeness, spiritual closeness, the hearts being close to one another. But she said... هَلْ أَمَرَكَ اللَّهُ بِذَلِكَ is this, is, the, is this the order from Allah that you should leave me here? Abraham nodded yes, turned around and walked and, and stopped crying and he made dua to Allah. Make the heart of the people come to this place. Who's going to come to that place? But let me show you the divine wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ibrahim took off. But Sarah, before Ibrahim took off, he said, Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let us go astray. Allah will, Allah will save us. Go. Yeah, you know, you, you want to go, just go. Allah and Ibrahim walked away crying, making that dua. Oh Allah, make people come to this place. Um, that was the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Baby Ishmael, this is in Genesis, by the way. It, baby Ishmael started to cry and Hagar started running between two mountains. Um, we still run between those two mountains as a sign of our pilgrimage between Safa and Marwa, looking for water. And she cried to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, biblical, uh, Oh Allah, do not make this child vanish, right? And then uh, the Bible said, Hagar opened her eyes to a well of water. Um, um, a well of water, God sent Gabriel, strike the ground, right? Between the legs of Ishmael and water gushed out. So God sent Gabriel, an angel, to strike, subhanAllah, between the legs of a prophet. And to this day, Muslims still drink from that water. We call it Zamzam water. This water has been gushing since that time, thousands of years ago, with no water pumps whatsoever, just flow. And uh, Hagar say Zamzam, which means, you know, she start collecting the water and the word zamzam means like she wants to constrain the water in one place that's the verb of constrain constrain for the water in one place and that's why we call it zamzam water right and um you know um uh, to that day her her command is commanding that well of water the water floats on its own as much as we want to take from it and it just stops on its own it's fascinating google that if you want to read about zamzam water 
So uh, uh, this this well of water, she will drink from it and she will go give Ish Ishmael. But the dua of Ibrahim, he wants people to come to this place. Now keep in mind, Ishmael and Hagar did not speak Arabic at this point. Uh, so, so because of that water, subhanAllah, because of that water gushing, uh, other animals start going, especially birds. Birds would come to a mountain. They don't live in a mountain, in, in, a, in a valley with no vegetation. So the birds start coming. And the Yemeni tribe, uh, by the name of Jurhums, the Jurhums tribes, start seeing birds. He said, what are the birds doing there? It must be some water. So all the Arabian tribe from today's Yemen moved close to that place. They moved place to that place because there was water and they found this woman and her child, Ishmael, there. And immediately a city started to be built there. Uh, Hagar started selling the water uh, to those tribes and Hagar was a merchant woman. And Sayyidina is Ismail is grown and Sayyidina Ismail is to start speaking Arabic and Hagar is to start speaking Arabic, which is very close to Hebrew. In some narration, Hagar spoke a different dialect, an Egyptian dialect, uh, but nevertheless, her stay uh, in Jerusalem or close to Jerusalem to the city of Al-Khalil or what's known as Hebron now um, is the story um, of, of Hagar, Ishmael, and uh, Sarah. So um, Ibrahim took off. And um, Ibrahim is not, to, um, um, is not to come back immediately, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have rewarded Sarah with Isaac. Because of her patience and sacrifice, uh, Sarah got pregnant with Isaac. So Ishmael still is the um, older son. Now, uh, we come, uh, we come uh, uh, to the story of pilgrimage as, as it comes to us, inshallah ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Muslims believe he went between Sarah and went east. Even the Bible say when Sarah died, he went east. But he would go back and forth, subhanAllah, to check on his wife. So he's, he would go between Sarah in Jerusalem, close to Jerusalem, and, and Hagar. And one day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he proclaimed pilgrimage upon Abraham. Uh, he asked Abraham to build. Uh, so Ibrahim and his son Ishmael is now resurrecting the house, right? So they're building the house together. I like the story because it's son and father and son, subhanAllah. Father and son are they building the Kaaba, right? Uh, why are they building the Kaaba? Well, that's where they lived. So the Kaaba is actually a two very small two bedroom apartment. They resurrected. Um, uh, they, they, they built it as a two-bedroom apartment. Uh, during the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, was another flood, and it destroyed the Kaaba again, and the people of the Prophet Muhammad, they resurrected only one bedroom. So when you go, when you go there, you see that this cube, and there's also a, a semi-circle there. That's the, this is the, this is the um, uh, room of Ishmael, right? Very small room. And the main, the main big house is where Abraham and Hagar lived. Um, now, uh, I, I just want to just uh, mention a few things about the building, the building, right? So Ibrahim Islam was so precise that he would build the Kaaba, you know, a rock by rock. Um, you know, there was no Home Depot back then. But the, my favorite, my favorite uh, reflection on the story that to this day we have the footprints of Ibrahim. Uh, this is the rock where Abraham actually stood uh, uh, and used that as a ladder to level how he perfectly uh, tried to build the house for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that looks beautiful and leveled. And I want you to know that in that rock, it's a real rock, there is an indentation of Abraham about an inch or half an inch of his footprint. And it seems like he was of a size eight, by the way. But I just want you to understand how long did Ibrahim stood on that rock in order to uh, make that house perfect. And how much time do we spend on the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on building the, the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? 
uh, Ibrahim was was um, uh, uh, was was very consistent, Subhanallah, and also his son helping him out. They built the building, and then all of a sudden there was one corner there intentionally left. It has been said that Ishmael went to go look for that for that uh, a perfect rock that would fit there, and he would come back after days to see that his father found the rock and put it there. But it does not match the rest of the rocks. Uh, this is what we call uh, the white stone back then. It is now called the black stone. Why is it called the black stone? Uh, it is said that Adam, peace be upon him, when he came down from paradise, uh, he, put, he took a rock as a souvenir from paradise. And that rock was so transparent uh, that you could see through it. It was kind of like a crystal. And when Ibrahim put it there, it was just shining the whole place. But because of the sin of people, that, 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 that rock turns black. Symbolic story, uh, real story. The whole idea is the black stone is there, subhanAllah. And it's a, it's, it's a, it's a rock from paradise. Now, um, um, uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim, uh, immediately as he was building the Kaaba, um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, when, 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 the, when the building is finished, um, um, uh, you know, the, the building is built by the water, by the way, and the city start getting, getting bigger and, and bigger and bigger. Um, I want you to understand, understand uh, one thing uh, uh, from, from, this, from, the, from the story, um, uh, that Sayyidina Ibrahim, alayhi salam, uh, as he stood there, he used to stand for hours and look. Muslims believe in the night journey that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded Abraham with a similar house in paradise. So in seven heavens, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, met Abraham, he met him with what we call al-bayt al-ma'mur, a place in heaven where people, angels come actually. So Muslims wear um, uh, the cloth of, of pilgrimage, and uh, in a uh, white cloth of pilgrimage, uh, to, to uh, imitate the angels that go in the seventh heavens. And, and uh, Prophet Ibrahim السلام, was met by Prophet Muhammad in that place as he was laying down or, 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 or his, 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 uh, uh, sitting with his, with his uh, back to, to the, to the Bayt al Ma'mur, to the Kaaba that is in the, in the seventh heaven. Now, never, never, nevertheless, um, it, comes ba it comes down. Uh, to the whole idea of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam coming back. Okay, so we built the house. What do we do? The rites of pilgrimage. The rites of pilgrimage, right? The rites of pilgrimage are many. But before Ibrahim alayhi salam is to be told about the rites of pilgrimage, he is to be tested even one more last time. Qala ya bunayya inni ara fil manami. Ibrahim is see a dream. Right? Um, فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعْيَةِ قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ إِنِّي أَرَى, إني أرى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أَذْبَحُكِ He sees a dream, and immediately he comes with this dream to his son Ishmael. The Quran is very specific. He said when Ishmael reached a, what we call it, a fetching age, meaning that he could go, you know, you know when your son becomes, um, I know we use the word fetch, uh, for sometimes for dogs, but that's also that's the verb. I'm mean, trying to use the, 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 the you know when you tell your son go get me a drink of water, go get me the remote control. So Ishmael reached that age, Subhanallah, where um, um, uh, Ishmael have reached uh, that age um, that he was um, 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 you know getting getting um, um, things for his father, Subhanallah, right? Um, so it has been said that this story took place before the actual building of the building of the Kaaba. Uh, it has been said this was before and sometimes says after. So it was before, whether it's before they built the Kaaba or after they built the Kaaba, it's irrelevant. But what's relevant is that Ishmael have reached the age where he could fetch things for his father. Um, I know I narrated the, the story of building the Kaaba, Ibrahim and Ishmael building the Kaaba. Um, some narration that this um, actual uh, severe test was given to Ibrahim before he established the rites of pilgrimage. So either way, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, is seen a dream that he is slaughtering his son. So he goes immediately to his son Ishmael 
uh, and he say, I see a dream, uh, and the Quran says, again, the, the Quran is uh, very specific, that his son got to that fetching age, and could go get things for him, so he's a young boy, young lad, and he says to him, I see in a dream that I am slaughtering you, what do you think I should do, right? And then immediately the son said, قَالَ يَا أَبَتِ فَعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ Oh my father, do whatever you think God told you to do. So that's an order from Allah, because prophets, when they see dreams, that's an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and not only that, you will find me among the patient one. Let's go do it. And then Ibrahim, this, you know, well, the narration is really long, but Ismail start giving instruction to his father how to take him out, how to slaughter him, uh, you know, turn my face away, Sharpen the knife. Do not let me wear a white shirt. This way, the blood will not splash on my on my. What a, what a family that submitted one hundred percent to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Now he goes to his wife. He goes to his wife. This is what I saw in my dream. This is what Allah ordered you to do. Guess what? He sent us this well of water. He did not let us go astray. He protected us. Allah will protect my son. If this is what Allah told you to do, then, you know, just, just make sure I'm away and take the son and, and, and do that. And, and, you know, this is, this is, this is really, um, uh, this is really a hard um, a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hard test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, but also, just like uh, in Christianity and Judaism, it was Isaac, the person to be sacrificed. Ibrahim actually goes to sacrifice his son. And he got tempted three times. I'm narrating all this because I'm going through pilgrimage. He get tempted three times, right? Uh, Ibrahim goes around the Kaaba many, many times thinking about it, right? Many times. Uh, then he goes to actually picks up his son. And as he picks up his son, Shaitan appears to him to tempt him. Narrations all over the place, but in, when the first temptation is... It was in the image of people. Like, what is people gonna say to you? You're gonna kill your own son? And, and Abraham would take seven pebbles and throw that at the image of Shaitan. And the Shaitan disappeared. He walks again, second time. And this time it comes on the image of his wife. Are you taking my son? Satan comes on the image of his son. Are you taking my son? And Ibrahim takes those pebbles and throw him at, 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 uh, um, at the image of his wife that Satan have cloaked, right? And then he goes for the third time, and now it is his own son, the image of his own son. I'm your, only, I'm, I'm your son. I'm your oldest son. Are you going to kill me? And then Ibrahim takes the uh, pebbles, seven pebbles, throw that again, right? Because this is right, all of this coming into the rites of pilgrimage. We're coming, we're coming to that, inshallah ta'ala. And, and then eventually Ibrahim, alayhi salam, does the ultimate sacrifice. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, um, ordered the knife that Ibrahim is having to slaughter his son with to be dull. And not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fafadaynahu, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given Ibrahim alayhi salam instead to fulfill his dream to slaughter a ram. Um, that's the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Of course, Ibrahim goes back to Sarah and Isaac becomes a prophet and Ibrahim alayhi salam, Sarah dies and he comes back um, with Hagar and eventually Ibrahim passes away and buried um, uh, close to Sarah. In, but the beautiful story is, is the simple fact that when Isaac found out that his father is, father is dying, he sent a messenger to his brother, a text message, no text message, uh, to his brother that say, father is dying, and Ishmael came all the way from the wilderness of Paran in Mecca, stopping in Tima, Medina, the city of the Prophet Muhammad eventually, and going back for the two brothers to bury their father together. Now, let's look at the rites of the pilgrimage as it related to the story. When Muslims go to Mecca, they adore the, what we call al-ihram, the intention of going into holy places and they wear two garments so everybody will be equal in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the white garments the Muslims wear also imitate the that of the angels about the al-bayt al-ma'mur and then uh, the Muslims subhanallah immediately go to Mecca and they go seven times around that house just like Ibrahim did 
um, immediately from that, the Muslims actually drink from Zamzam water, from the holy water that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends to Ibrahim, uh, sent to Hagar and to Ishmael. And then after they drink from that drink of water, they stand up facing the footprints of Ibrahim alayhi salam and make two rak'ahs. And when they pray two rak'ahs, two units of prayers, they read Qul huwa Allahu Ahad. They read the verses that have to do with monotheism. Say God is one. Allahu Samad. There's nobody, nobody look like Allah. Lam Yalid. He was neither begets, neither is he begotten. And there's no one like Allah. This is the verses we recite. And then we recite, Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun. Say, O people who do not believe. I don't worship what you worship, neither do you worship what I worship. You have your religion and I have my religion. Right? So everything we do in pilgrims have to do with Abraham. Actually, a more to do with, with, with Hagar, right? Because immediately after that, we drink from Zamzam water, right? Uh, and pray that two raka'ahs, we go between the two mountains and run back and forth seven times, just like Hagar did. And we have the, the, the places marked where Hagar used to run, and men run during that time, subhanAllah. As I took my wife to the pilgrimage, subhanAllah, I'm running, and my wife is, I'm holding my, hand, my wife's hand um, uh, next to me, and 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 the 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 and I was thinking about it. Why am I running? The one who ran was a woman, Subhanallah. And and that comes to the sacrifice of this woman, Hagar, Hagar, our mother Hagar. We call our mother Hagar, Subhanallah. Uh, we run uh, between that for seven times, and then right after that, uh, we cut our hair. And also part of the pilgrimage is actually to go to the. Three places where Abraham was tempted and three and throw, subhanAllah, the pebbles um, at, um, at the temptation of shaitan. Part of the pilgrimage is to touch the black stone that Ibrahim had put there that came from heaven. Part of pilgrimage, subhanAllah, is also to uh, shear some, uh, cut our hair uh, to make us look as if we are newborn. Uh, part of the pilgrimage all has to do with Ibrahim and, 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 and Hagar, subhanAllah. Now, um, um, when, 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 uh, uh, when Muslims uh, come back from pilgrimage, subhanAllah, um, the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, Al-Hajj al-Mabrur laysa lahu jaza illa al-Jannah. A person who does Hajj according to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and according to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallam, that person have no other reward except paradise. The person gets paradise, a newly born, subhanAllah. We're going to the source when we do pilgrimage. We're going with clockwise, going around around the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're touching, uh, we do making prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're drinking from Zamzam water. We're praying where Ibrahim stood, where Prophet Muhammad stood. We're doing all the rituals, subhanAllah. And the night of, 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 of Arafat, we go to the Arafat mountain, where Adam and Eve have met, and Adam and Eve actually, God forgave Adam and Eve. So there's a lot of symbolism that when it comes to the pilgrimage, and it has to do with Ibrahim alayhi salam, and with Sayyidah Hajar alayhi salam, and um, you know, uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps as we look at the pilgrimage, you would see the king and uh, uh, the queens um, worshiping in the same place, and also, you cannot tell the difference between a king and a dishwasher, or a king or a garbage collector. Um, it, it's 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 a place where where people feel equal because everybody's wearing uh, the clothing of pilgrimage. Subhanallah. Uh, we sit down and reflect in a valley of Mina um, after the pilgrimage uh, of what have happened. Uh, we walked uh, during in the steps of the Prophet, peace be upon him. It's not part of, of, of pilgrimage, uh, the rites of pilgrimage. But if you haven't noticed that, Mecca and Medina are connected because Ibrahim stopped at Tima and eventually uh, went to Mecca. And this is, Tima is where the city of Prophet Muhammad have asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make that city holy, just like Ibrahim asked um, uh, Mecca uh, to, be, to be holy. Um, so... Uh, we go visit the city of Medina and we do visit the grave of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and we do visit the mosque of the Prophet This is pilgrimage season and this is the story of Ibrahim as the climax of the story of Ibrahim alayhi uh, salam um, shown the rites of pilgrimage and Prophet Muhammad was shown the rites of pilgrimage and we still perform the rites of pilgrimage exactly 
the way to commemorate Hagar, Ishmael, you know, and Ibrahim alayhi salam. And most importantly, to commemorate the forgiveness of God Almighty to Adam and Eve on the night of Arafat. The 10 days of the Hijjah, as I finish this episode, inshallah ta'ala, the 10 days of the Hijjah is upon us. And uh, those are the 10 days that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by. Well, Fajr, Walayalin Ashr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by those two days, by 10 days. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, uh, remind us in the Quran that when Moses, peace be upon him, went to the mountain and he was given the Ten Commandments, um, he was fasting and he was praying. And then um, Moses was so happy and so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he did not want those 30 days to be only 30 days, then he asked for 10 days. It's narration, those are the same 10 days. In those 10 days, the Prophet said, Mamin ayyamin. There's no other days are the, the, the good deeds are beloved to Allah than those days, those ten days. So in those ten days we pray, we fast. Uh, you could do qiyam al layl as the Prophet said in a hadith related by Al-Bayhaqi. Then they said a lot of takbirat, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, in tahleel, takbir, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. Uh, um, we do that from the beginning, subhanAllah, but in the masjid we'll do it right after Fajr of the day of Arafat, inshaAllah ta'ala, after each Salat. In those 10 days, as related by Al-Bayhaqi, the Prophet sallam, said, uh, uh, if you fast one day, is equivalent to fasting one year, right? And Qiyamu Layla, if you stay up in prayer in one night, is equivalent to the reward of standing up in prayer in the one night of Al-Qadr. Right? Equivalent, right? And awal amulu fihinna fihinna mudaf. The Prophet up to 700. Any deeds that we do in those 10 days are multiplied up to 700. So, um, you know, I know there's no pilgrimage this year except maybe for 1,000, 1,500 people due to the coronavirus. Um, we could do our own, um, our own pilgrimage here with those 10 days. And we could do our own repentance and going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those 10 days. And do not forget the day of Arafat insha'Allah ta'ala. I think it will be 29, we're not sure yet. Um, um, the day of Arafat when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, forgives all the pilgrims outside, but also Allah is willing to expiate the sins of one previous years and one coming years if we fast that day. The people of Hajj cannot fast that day but the people outside of Hajj can fast their day. The pilgrimage season have to do with repentance, repentance, repentance. And the story of Ibrahim have to do with standing up for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sacrificing, and ultimately uh, the word is sacrificing. Because the day of Eid, we call it Eid al-Adha, the day of the sacrifice and the day of a sacrifice muslims still to this day and we should each household should give in charity at least one zabiha one uh, qurbani um uh, uh one udhiya uh, udhiya means sacrifice qurbani means something that bring you close to allah um and one zabiha is uh, one slaughter um that give the meat uh, uh of the animal to the poor and the needy uh, you could do that online, you could send that overseas, you could do that, you know, with social distancing, stuff like that. Uh, there are places here in Oklahoma City you could do that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing with each hair of that animal, each of this hair is will be one sin forgiven as well. You want to give it cash, inshallah ta'ala, I always make the joke that, you know, if you want to give a ram for the sake of Allah, that's fine. If you want to give the other ram, which is the Dodge Ram, is also for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Minimum, if you can, is one udhiya per household. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam specifically say, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did nahr, and nahr means a camel, right? So if you, want, if you could do, uh, you know, as much as you could do, you could do one goat, uh, one sheep, two sheep, ten sheep, whatever you could do, inshallah ta'ala, the Prophet did uh, ten camels, subhanallah. Uh, whatever you could do to uh, help the poor and the needy eat, you know, because I know we are used to Burger King and, and all this food around us and all you can eat buffets, but for the poor and the needy, sometimes um, meat comes um, every once in a while. Trust me.
I know. I've been there. Eid Mubarak. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.